Hey, Azim's fan playing Thief Deadly Shadows last time. I was here. Shut up, Garrett. fence take a look at Lord Julian's medallion. Perry says the crest belongs to the Rutherfords, one of the oldest so-called great families with a castle in South Quarter and a street named after them. They've got a lot of wealth and a nasty reputation for turning on each other. Based on that conversation I overheard, Julian is definitely carrying on the family tradition. Lord Ember, Julian's cousin, currently resides in the castle and Julian wants revenge. Julian had a good plan. Hide inside a supply cart and ride in after dark. Then signal the cook to open the side door by putting out the lion's head torch in the courtyard. A good enough plan for me to use myself. That bloodline opal sounds valuable. And it's better off with me than sitting around in their vault. But I can't get lazy. Ember will have his personal guard and doubtless a few other family tricks in store for anyone who comes after the opal. And variation on the line number two. Let's keep count. It's funny how the volume sliders don't affect the uh, FMVs or Garrett's briefings. It's pretty inconsistent. Let's choose expert and hope it stays that way, shall we? Oh, yep, yep. It crashes when you click a thing with fraps loaded. I'm never going to start remembering that. Check out this quote. It's like freaking quoteful. Fine. Let us observe the loading screen. Funny thing about this loading screen, you'll notice it takes forever. This is because of some weird voodoo magic that somehow makes this game unable to load any faster, even with blazing fast hardware and an SSD. It's actually pretty physically impossible sounding, but... There's the torch. Now to give the signal. Quiet tonight. It's the rain earlier. Everyone's gone in. It's like a pitch out here. They doubled the watch. This castle's as old as South Corner. See the way the stone is? Pulled off an army. Probably has. You really think so? Who knows? It's an old part of town. Streets are all different here. Not like Aldale or Stone Market. Ah, what do you know about it? I could have been in the city watch. I knew it that well. I could find my way around blind. <sighs> Bet you've seen things. You wouldn't believe it. Saw a rat once as big as a dog. I saw a man, dead in the street, without his skin. Come on, who'd take somebody's skin? Could be... Nah, I won't say it. Nobody knows the whole city. How old it is, how many times it's been built over. Not the Hammerites, nobody. Well, well. Looks like there's a skin stealer about. That's a pretty weird finish. Let's freaking save finally. Anyways, funny thing is that those guys go back together and talk again. Uh, I don't know how long it takes, but it happens, and it's, like, hilarious and stuff. So this is the first, you know, proper non-tutorial mission and stuff, and it's, you know, existence. Oh, yeah, it's not the same two guys, it's a different two guys. Imagine that. Lord Julian was pretty angry. You see his face when he walked out? I wasn't there. Julian's the better man. Oh, don't speak of it. You're a sworn man, fool. I don't like this. Brothers fighting. They'll settle it. You'll see. A marriage or a treaty or a, a dancing party. Whatever the noble folk have. What did they quarrel over? Some 
kind of bet. Something about their hawks, I think. I like a good bear baiting myself. <laughs> it is a funny thing. <laughs> bear baiting. <laughs> it's like stick a little pot of honey on a fishing lure and catch a bear out the water. Sounds like a grand time. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so one way to get in is you can put out this lion's head sconce. It's out. I hope that cook is as good as his word. See, a door opens there. Uh, another way to get in is another way to get in. And, and, and stuff. So, uh, let's adjust things and saw something. <laughs> find another way in. Of course, sure. this game's ladders are kind of interesting in that they're sort of like super... Uh, uh oh, here he comes. He's on second. Uh, they're super, like, sticky and, like, super coated and stuff. And not like not like the ones in Thief, which are super loose. These ladders are tight, is what I'm saying. So you could go in this window, or you could kind of walk over above here, I think, and get way to the other side. But I think there may be, like, a potion or some random shit up here. So I'm going to try to check it out. Another thing about this game that I forgot to mention is the movement system. I guess I could talk about this here. Uh, the movement system's really weird and awkward. Again, you get used to it, so it's not that big a deal, but... You can see yourself. They call it the body awareness system, which... You know, okay. But... The weird thing that you have to get used to is... When you turn your mouse, it's like your head is turning, not your body. Your body only starts turning when your head goes kind of sideways. And But if your head's way over here and you try to move forward, you don't just start moving forward, you, you kind of turn around a bit, you see? And it's not really that major, but sometimes if you're on like really small ground or you're trying to be precise, it can be a little annoying. And uh, in general, it's totally unnecessary. And also, you can go in third person if you're like, if you're like waiting in the shadow and you just want to see Garrett's juicy thighs. Oh, that was a close one. And you can kind of walk and stuff. I don't know. I don't really use this for serious, unless I'm just kind of bored, which I don't know why I would be in this game, so let's just do it normally. Yeah. So you could go in here if you want. I thought there was like a little speck of something in there. I guess I'll go in here since I'm there. Well, go inside. Now, the thing about uh, Deadly Shadows is that um, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, it's different but the same. You know, the technicals are different. Aspects of the gameplay are different. The engine's totally different looking. Let me just read this. All guards take note! A portcullis has been installed in the basement in front of the Rutherford Vault as added protection for the Bloodline Opal. Only Lord Ember has the ability to open the portcullis. Lord Ember expects his cousin Julian to try for the gem soon. Be on watch for anything suspicious. Captain Williams. Oh, man. God damn it. Noise. Make. So, there's find a clue. Okay, the vault is protected by a portcullis. Steal the Bloodline Opal. Yeah, the way this game plays is really different. But... I personally think that they did a really good job of bringing over the non-technical aspects. The, uh, the story, the world, you know, the whole Thief universe, the characters, the conversations, like the... Those kind of things from the original games and plunking them into something really different as a kind of bridge. You know, like, yes, the feel is different, but if you're familiar with Thief, you'll kind of get the hang of this quickly because a lot of things are the same, you know. They had a lot of respect, as people say. And also, it's cool that a lot of you guys... Uh, also like this game, you know, I almost kind of thought I was alone, but uh, a lot of people have commented saying, man, I also like TDS, and some people have even said that they straight up love it, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, you know, different, but the same. I mean, they've got, you know, Garrett voice acting, which is more than can be said for certain other upcoming games. <laughs> Still bitter for literally no reason. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and they got Benny. And, uh, that other guy, what Benny always talks to- <coughs> Damn it. Oh. Oh. Better see if that was something. AI that can How am I supposed to work sleep. when someone's put out the lights? Yeah. I sure oh, did. Your horses! They were coming! <laughs> uh, it was nothing. I like how they sound bothered. sleepy. They have a whole other voice set. Just for being sleepy. Come on. Come on. Shit, come on. There you go. And now I have to get the sun out of my eyes in real life again. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I remember... Oh, whoops. When I first played this game, 
there was this Benny-voiced guy walking around here somewhere. I don't remember which it was. And I alerted him to second, and he went like, Sounded like a sound of some kind. And I was just like, <laughs> and stuff. It was all pretty funny. So you've got a map, and it's sort of, uh, it's, there's no form of auto map whatsoever. You know, in the first Thief, it was kind of, it showed where you were in blue. In the second Thief, it showed where you were in yellow and everything else in blue or whatever. Whereas in this one, it doesn't show anything. You just gotta look at it, which, kind of cool, I suppose. Kind of makes you work, and I love to work in games, obviously. I mean, <laughs> work is what you want to do when you play, all right? Well, well, well. Baby's first arrow. That's pretty good, somehow. So I guess this is the armory room, and there's weird squares around I the room. write a book. A guard's life by me. <laughs> and, uh, too boring. <laughs> oh, whoops. <gasps> what was that? Yeah, forgive me. I thought right click was dropped softly, but clearly not. This game has like no way to drop things soft. There's no precision in the drop. <laughs> or I'm just too dumb to remember it, but that's not dumb. That's just not remembering. So yeah, whatever. Anyways, these are the loading zone things, which yeah, haha, they look dumb. Whatevs. Who cares? I don't care. Some of these paintings you can take as well, which wasn't the yeah, case in the original. I better tell someone about this. Missions. Also. In Thief 3, they made it so that you can't blackjack peasants, um, if, if, if they're alerted, whereas in the original games you could, ah. Even to the casual observer, the seven great families have become neither great, nor by most standards, family. So I've set it to just have the flavor text here and not those ridiculous tips like, TIP! You can move by pressing keys on your keyboard! Whoa. Anyway, yeah. Uh... So we'll try to actually be good at the game. Also, for some reason that I seem to have forgotten, Shift seems to be Crawl again in Thief 3 instead of Run. Uh, I don't really remember it being like that, but hey. <laughs> oh well. Uh, now, the areas here, those loading zone places, the areas here are tiny and they have to be divided up into loading zones <gasps> on account of... Over there, did, did you see? On account of this game being designed for the original Xbox, as I'd normally call it, the Xbox One, but of course, since it's trendy now to put one at the end of everything, even if it's not the first version of something, you can no longer call Xbox One Xbox One, because the new one's called time. Xbox One. It's probably just my but own shadow I, I saw. give a flying crap about consoles, not even Wii U. Seriously, Nintendo, you better make a whole bunch of good games before I play good games by you. Jeez. <laughs> I never pick up candlesticks, and yet here I go. Yes, so, 64 megs of memory. This game is has what people would normally call consoleitis, which, you know, is part of the problem. I mean, obviously people sometimes have a problem with just this game in general, even if it didn't have consoleitis, but, you know, presuming you don't, it's still kind of crippled by that a bit, but, eh. You know, a good computer and a texture pack can mitigate somewhat the issues, but, you know, not the loading zones and not other things. I don't know. There's a fat guy. He's funny. He's hilarious. Oh, there's a fat guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the AIs will sometimes talk to each other, like in Dishonored, only, like, not as stupid or something. I don't know. There's a really a lot of really funny lines. That's the thing that they kept from the first two games, the funny conversations and just the funny things that AI AIs say. You know, it, it, it wasn't like this personality list thing like Dishonored or like a lot of modern games. You know, they really they really kept the good stuff. It's cool, you know. So yeah, you can memorize the positions on these locks, but who the hell has time to memorize every single lock in the game unless they're doing a speed run? That's just crazy. So here's the window that you kind of could have... No, it's not here. It's somewhere around here is a window you could have come in. I guess. I don't know. Well, guess it was just my imagination. Yeah, some of these new voices, though. Like, they kept the old voices, but then they added some new Something ones. Something To me... Don't work quite as well. I don't know. This guy's voice kind of grates on me. He sounds papery. And there's another guy who sounds similar but slightly less nasally. Probably the same guy. And I don't think they work quite as well. They're a little <laughs> less interesting. Scared myself is all. A little more boring and grating slightly than the old voice actors. But hey, you know. 
Benwick. Ill news from the city. The medallion's missing. Julian cries treason, of course. Which of the cousins would have done it? Nestor. P.S. If it's you, tell me and I am with you. It was cleverly done. <laughs> oh, man. And also, at least a few guys who worked on the original Thief games also worked on this one, so that might be part of the reason why it's, uh... Got a lot of respect for the games. And also, uh... The, the most important thing that I forgot to say, because I know you're listening, Josiah, is that Thief 3 is, of course, an orange in lemon's clothing. Cousin, Ember's efforts to protect the opal go beyond reasoning. He's installed a new portcullis in the cellar in front of the vault door. As for the mechanism that controls it, my men have searched everywhere with no results. Everywhere but Ember's own chambers, that is. If you find out anything, let me know. Ember readies himself for Julian's return. He keeps his Rutherford medallion always nearby, and not just because of its value in gold. Lady Elizabeth must have sensed what is coming. I'm sure you've noted her absence as well. As for us, we must play to whomever is the victor. Our time will come. Above all, beware, Cousin C. Oh, wow. It's a conspiracy. Conspiracy, Cousin C. Yeah, this is the window -y jump in and then you kind of go here. That's what it is. So there's a map, but you know when it comes to maps in Thief 3, I tend to just like to not use them and sort of go by memory or just go by something. <laughs> of course this game has some funny physics. They're very loosely done. You know, sometimes they can result in entertaining crap including shooting a guy with a bow and arrow and them falling over backwards in a weird position. It's <laughs> hysterical. <coughs> so this is like the middle room with a, a, a staircase, I guess. Yeah, now expert's loot goal is always like 75% or maybe 100%, maybe even, I don't know, 90%. <laughs> As you can see, I haven't gotten very far in, in that regard. Also, the sort of bumping and pushing physics in this game are weird. You can make loud noises with too much here. effort. Oh yeah, and guys notice missing loot. That's a thing which I'm not too sure if I really like because, like, what's the point? Even, even in Tarvis 79's ghost run, he goes, well, he's not gonna count uh, second alerts, or yellow alerts or whatever, hmm. for missing loot Where as long as that? he himself Nothing is there. not seen. <laughs> because there'd alarm. be no <laughs> point in getting loot, which is the whole point of the game. If you couldn't get caught, I don't know. That's a thing that's a little bit realistic that I think maybe isn't really necessary for gameplay so much, but hey, I don't know, man. Now that I'm done talking about everything I remember about the game thus far, I've degenerated into just sort of babbling. But, hey, where the hell am I? <laughs> yeah, and the shadows are cool. <sighs> Dynamic shadows so you can see guys before you see them. It's, it's pretty great. Yawning twice. That's not what you do. <laughs> that sounded odd. <laughs> yeah, well... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bending over backwards like that. Like, who the hell... Who the hell? Yeah, see... You may or may not like the intentional parts of the game, but, like, it has some unintentional things. Bugs, you know, it was a bit rushed. The devs even say so. Some of these FMVs in the game are a bit rushed, and the devs say so. I don't know. Nestor, I've had the sergeant at arms sacked. Hold on! This gilded helm you won at the Summer's Day tourney has gone missing. Did Julian take it? It's worth quite a bit, sentimental value aside. Bertram! Oh, man. <laughs> well, okay. 17%. I don't know, loot is like a percentage instead of... Well, no, it's got a number too, but... Eh, you know. Oh, man, it's got more rings. You just kind of like... Quickly do it because... I don't know. I don't want to spend time picking a lock, like... I just don't. I mean, some people like to do that. I personally don't really care to. But, yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, it's this room. And yeah, and of course, things don't automatically pop out of chests. You have to pick them from the chest, which sometimes causes hilarity when they're placed in poorly and you kind of have to, like... Man, what? And you kind of have to, like, uh, reach around and then you still don't get them. It's pretty funny. Hey, I'm supposed to be able to push this. Oh, there we go. You have to stand. Okay, fine. Uh, for some reason, I'm going ultra mega slow. Quite understand why, but all right. Uh. Well, that doesn't glint, so I guess it's nothing. Fine enough. However, there is something of value. It is a special loot piece. 
Lord Mortimer Rutherford the Mad, painted by Master Arlick. And, uh, yes, there's such a thing as special loot, which to me kind of is interesting. It adds a bit of interest to the loot finding. I don't know. It's kind of cool. Having said that, I think that's about it for uh, this section. So I'll probably just get myself over to the loading zone and uh, end off the part, as they say. Another thing that I forgot to mention that I do like about this game... Oh, well, here's... Yeah, there's two loading zones, but they only show one. It's ridiculous and inaccurate and, and stupid, but... <laughs> pardon me. But hey, yeah, is that... One thing I like about this game is that the compass is now part of your light gem and it's always there, which, if you ask me, kind of should have been done in the first place. Like, I don't want to have to switch around all the time. I mean, the compass is a convenient thing to switch to, but that's just a, you know, that's just a hack. The compass should always be visible. There's really no reason not to have it be, because if it wasn't, you'd just set it to a convenient key like I do and look at it all the time anyway. So yeah, good idea. Anyways, see you guys next time when I go through the loading zone and bye for now.